Uh, hi guys, my name is Tom Antos and uh, today I am super excited to show you guys my new most favorite uh, camera accessory. Uh, if you know me, I, I love using a lot of different camera stabilizers or camera gimbals, uh, but I always find some something wrong, you know, with them. Well, I think I found my perfect camera stabilizer. This is the Cam Single, comes in this nice case and it's fairly small, uh, easy to transport. And it works amazingly well with uh, with uh, DSLR, DSLM type of cameras. Uh, I, so far, I had a chance to use this uh, on a music video uh, that I did in New York City, uh, and I, on it I had the Sony A7S II. Uh, I've also since then tested out uh, this gimbal with uh, my Panasonic GH4. Works amazingly uh, with those, you know, both of these cameras. Uh, here you can see some shots that I got, you know, just literally running around New York City in the middle of downpouring, you know, torrential rain, uh, the gimbal got completely soaking wet. And as far as I know, it's not really waterproof, but uh, I gotta tell you guys, I had no problems. I mean, I, I was running around for a whole day while it was raining with this gimbal. Every so on, I would just stop, sort of wipe it and just kept on going. And the next day and then the day after that and ever since, uh, and this gimbal, you know, works amazingly well. Um, uh, another really cool thing about this gimbal is that it does not require any tools to balance it. Uh, and it is just really simple and easy to set up. Um, so let me just show you guys quickly sort of how it works and what I'm gonna do just for this video. Uh, and just a warning, I haven't done this. I haven't used it with uh, basically uh, the, any other camera other than the Sony a7S II or the Panasonic GH4. So just as a demonstration, I'm gonna take it out of the box and kind of set it up with, uh, with two other different cameras in, in different weight classes. And we'll just kind of, just to show you uh, how long it takes to set up and that kind of stuff. So anyways, like I said, it all comes in this nice uh, case. Open it up. It comes with a manual. Not that you really need to look at it. I actually didn't, but uh, but you know, if you're interested, you have the manual there. Um, you put that aside. And here, it comes with a charger. Very straightforward. You just charge the, the, the handle, which has a built-in battery here in the handle. Just plug it in on the side here and you leave it and this battery what's amazing about it is that uh while i was shooting that music video uh running around all over new york city like i said and i was pretty much had the gimbal on for almost non-stop eight hours uh, it lasts me basically the, the whole day so like i said eight hours after around you know because i was using the sony a7s with a pretty big heavy lens which i think technically was too much weight for that this gimbal can, can handle but uh but still it was able to to work with it now after eight and a half hours that's when i started noticing just the, i guess the battery was running so low that the gimbal was still stabilizing the shots it just wasn't able to pan left and right or up and down as quickly it was kind of slowing down until eventually it just shuts off on you but still amazing that the battery lasts for so long so anyways this is the the, the main component i would say of the you know the base of it and you can also put, you know, it has quarter inch and a three eighths of an inch, uh, you know, uh, threads on the bottom. So you can put it on a tripod, you can even put it on a crane, things like that. Uh, you can, there's a really, some really cool ways you can use this thing. You notice up here it has a different connections. That's because we have to connect the, the top portion. Take that out. So this is the actual cradle and the, the, the gimbal motors. They're all in, in this assembly here. So what we do is we just take this bottom here line up this dot put it in and then you rotate this thing to the left side just to tighten it and that's it the gimbal is assembled now we can put the, the actual camera under uh, it also comes with uh, some extra screws things like that uh, power adapter and it comes with the base plate so uh, today i'm going to set it up with the sony nex 5r very small light camera and also the uh, canon 7d an older pretty heavy uh, DSLR. So I'm putting the base plate here on the camera. There, okay, tighten it. And first I usually just kind of put the base plate, like the camera in the middle of the base plate. And then if anything, I'll adjust it further. Uh, here, just kind of slide it into the, uh, on top, top of the gimbal here. And it has a safety set of a release button. So once it's in there, it's not gonna, even if, if you didn't tighten it, if the camera drops, it will not fall out of the out of there there's a safety button here in the bottom and like i said what's really cool about this gimbal is that it's uh, all the balancing and adjusting is toolless so as you can see all, you have all these different knobs here so the way that i usually you know adjust well pretty much all the you know three axis gimbals is that first i'll sort of just hold it up here 
and I kind of isolate the the roll and then the the roll and then the, the pan axis and I'll just kind of work with the tilt axis. So here I'm going to just make sure that uh, here let me take this off. Make sure that this camera is balanced. So right now it's dipping too much forward and I've moved the camera, you know, uh, back basically as much as I can, so that means I got to move the base plate now back. So uh, I'll take this thing out. Loosen this up, and I'm just gonna move the basically the camera further back on the on the base plate, and that's just simply because the you know so different cameras have different center of balance, and this camera is very light, so all the balance weight is basically on the on the lens. Okay, and again, I'm holding this this thing down, so I just want to make sure that this uh, the the tilt basically of the camera up and down that this is kind of more or less balanced. So somewhere there looks good. So once I find a good spot here where it doesn't tilt basically too fo much forward or back, as you can see up here, I kind of just put it somewhere in the center. Somewhere there, I'm going to tighten this thing here on the bottom. Once you tighten that, that keeps that, that position on the camera there. So now maybe moved a little, so I'm going to adjust it slightly more. Okay, there seems to be good. Now it seems to be very bottom heavy because next way to test it out is to kind of grab this uh, camera here, cradle, put it up so the back of the camera is facing down and just drop it. If the back is dropping, that means that it's bottom heavy. If it was dropping the other way, that means that it's top heavy. So now we'll adjust that by uh, moving this thing. So we loosen this knob here, this is for tightening it. And then you can move this up. And we'll just keep on moving this until, again, it's not dropping to the bottom. Move it up. Now all of these uh, points here on the gimbal have different markings, which is really great. So you gotta, you, this way you make sure that everything, you know, you can kind of remember your positions for, uh, for let's see, next time you put the camera back on there. So yeah. And there, as you can see, now see I can put it in any of these positions here and the camera just stays. So that's balanced. So once you balance that, the next thing you balance is basically uh, the the roll axis. As you can see right now, the camera just, you know, the, all the weight just goes here to the left where the motor is. So that means I got to move the camera to the right to counter it. So you loosen this here knob on the front and that allows you to move the camera. So if I move it all the way to the right, you see now it moves to the right. So you kind of just want to find like a good middle position there. There. Okay, so that's balanced now. So again, we hold the, the third axis. These two should be balanced now. So I can position the camera anywhere I want it and more stays there. Yeah. And now the next thing I got to do is to adjust the, the roll axis. So I mean uh, the, the yaw axis, which is the bottom here. So the way you can do that is you can kind of just point the like hold the gimbal like this sideways and as you can see up here you can see that all the weight that goes to where the motor is so the motor drops down so i gotta now kind of move the, the whole thing a bit forward so what i do is here in the back you loosen this knob and just with this one knob you can easily adjust the the balance of the, the axis so i'll move it forward let's see if that does it it's dropping a little slower, so that means I'm getting closer, but still not there. And now, yeah, see now it's starting to tilt to the forward. So I'll move it back a little. And there, it seems to be balanced. Yeah. So that should be good. So we can just go now, power the gimbal. Power, you press this button here. And just press and hold it until you hear it powered on. And there we have it. As you can see, the gimbal works and it keeps the camera nice and steady. And as you guys saw, it, it's fairly quick to balance uh, the, this camera. 
And also you have a joystick here on the front so you can, you know, adjust basically the, where the camera is positioning. And there's also different modes too. So um, by pressing the power button once you enter in the profile mode one. So this is it. And this is basically the standard sort of follow profile. So if I go left or right, the camera will follow. Same thing if I go up or down, so up or down. You can see up or down, it also follows nicely. Now profile two, just click two times. Now it's still following in the left and right, the pen, but it doesn't follow in the tilt, up and down. Camera will always stay level. Uh, now profile three is completely locked off. And as you can see now it doesn't follow in any of the axes. It just stays there. So there. And now we'll go back to profile one. There we are. And one really cool thing about this gimbal is that it's one of the few gimbals out there right now that has uh, encoders into the uh, added to the motors. So I don't know if you'll notice, but the motors seem to be quite a bit larger. That's because what the encoders do is they actually also remember the position of the motors, which without getting too te the technical, it just really means that it's a lot easier to first of balance the camera, let's say keep the horizon level, or even if you want to, let's say, you know, change the starting position of the camera to different, it's very easy because the encoders will remember the position. So for example, if let's say you're using it and you know, the gimbal is, I don't know, the completely thrown off and it's like something like this, you know, which I'm sure sometimes has happened when you're working with some of the other gimbals, where what you can do now is you can basically take this gimbal and you can sort of hold it, hold it for a few seconds, hold it level and then let go of it. And as you can see, the gimbal now found its sort of the level position. As you can see, there we have it. And yeah, and you can do, do this very easily to, like I said, to make sure that the gimbal always goes back to, to, to level. You can just easily just grab it by hand and just move it there. Uh, also, the gimbal works really well when you, if you're using an upside down mode. Uh, you can, for example, grab it like this. And you can just use the, the joystick to, for example, tilt up and down. And I've gotten shots like this before, for example, uh, you know, not very, comf not very comfortable right now to hold it this way, but you can see like, like this, for example, running around, getting these kind of shots, or for example, you know, shots looking up even. Uh, and it's all thanks to, to using the, the joystick there. And, and the encoders will keep the camera steady. So yeah, you can use it for basically for reverse mode. Uh, you can use it um, and, you know, pretty much like I said in any configuration you can put it and it's all because uh, the fact that the encoders you know really keep the remember the position of the camera and see now it goes back to the other position And now, as you can see, I was able to go back again to the, the underhand mode. And if you want, you can even put the camera facing the other way, so that this way you can you can put it completely this way, like that. As you can see, I could have it like this and have it completely upside down, holding it like this, and just put the lens the other way. You can balance it, so you can do that too, and you will also keep the camera nice and steady for you. So, anyways, as you can, as you can see, there's a lot of different possibilities of using this gimbal. Uh, you know, it's very simple to, to use, very quick to set up, which is very important. Battery lasts the whole day uh, and, you know, it even, you know, withstands being used like, you know, and abused like the way that I did it in the, in the, in the rain. Um, really, there's nothing bad I can say about this gimbal. I've, like I said, I've been using it for the last about a month and a half and I'm just loving it. And, you know, unless I really need to start putting in a lot of extra weight, which this gimbal obviously won't take really more than the weight of the camera and the lens. So if you wanted to add, for example, a follow focus or things like that, then, you know, I, I, only then will I take another gimbal. But if I'm working one of these kind of smaller cameras and, and you know, and I know that the gimbal can take that weight, then this is the gimbal that I always go with. Because you can see, I mean, it's overall doesn't even add that much to weight, first of all, the camera, but even just the size of it, like you're gonna keep it close to your body. Uh, if you're not, if you're done using it, let's say you turn it off, you can just easily kind of flip it and you can take it like this. You can detach, like I said, the handle very easily. So you can put that in your pocket. This, you can hang it, let's see, from a belt or something. So it's just, it's a lot more compact, easier to work with. And that's something that, you know, if you have been watching my videos, you know that I love the smaller, the easier, lighter things are. 
you know, especially this camera gear that I'm using, then the, the more pleasant it is uh, actually using it. Uh, if you guys want more information about, you know, the gimbal, where you can get it, uh, again, check out my website, tomantosfilms.com, or click on the links in the description of this video. Right now, this uh, gimbal retails for $988. There's also, at the beginning of December, uh, a new add-on coming up for it, which is a, a cool little uh, remote control. This is just for under, uh, I think, $90. It's gonna retail, and it's that. What that really allows you to do is then uh, uh, basically attach this uh, this gimbal on, let's say, on top of a crane or somewhere like that, or even just put it on a tripod somewhere in a, in a remote location. And you can, you know, f from a distance away, you can just using the remote, you can kind of point and tilt the camera where you want it. So essentially, you have a, a really light, easy to set up uh, a remote, uh, you know, wireless pan and tilt head. So really cool uh, thing. Uh, function and it really just adds, you know, makes uh, the the possibilities of using this you know a, a lot a lot easier. Uh, I mean, one thing that I would do, for example, is you can just grab a, a simple uh, audio boom pole that has, for example, the the three quarters of an inch, you know, uh, threads on the bottom. You can attach it here to the bottom, or you can just even take you know, a good old fashioned broomstick, tape it to the handle. And you can use that literally to uh, as a, as a as a crane now because you can have the camera on at the end of this long, you know, uh, stick, and you can just move it up and down really high, and you know have another person then with a joystick operating where the camera is actually looking at it. And even if the pole is kind of shaking a little bit, you know, but because it's a three-axis gimbal, it's going to keep the camera nice and steady. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities, and I think for the price, you can't go wrong. Once again, it's the only really gimbal right now that this size that has all these functionalities, has the encoders included in there. And also some people I know were wondering if, for example, if you want to still use a monitor uh, with this, yeah, so you can, you have another here attachment here, quarter inch, you can attach a monitor or like a little a monitor arm uh, and then put the monitor up here, which I have done before. And then you can just connect the cable to your monitor and then you, this way you can use the monitor to, uh, to actually see what you're framing and stuff like that. Anyways, really cool gimbal. Again, guys, make sure to check out uh, the links in the description of this video. And if you like this video review, uh, click the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.